Because if you think about Philly, that's like where real hoopers play. The fans hold you accountable. You have to be, you know, durable. You have to be tough. You have to bring your game all day, every day. And he wanted to win a championship, and he knew that there's no better running mate if you're a guard than a post. And there's no better post player in the NBA right now than Joel Embiid. And he probably saw that potential, saw Joel Embiid getting healthier, saw that they play defense, and that's one place where he could use a little help and motivation, saw that they had an excellent coaching staff. I'm not surprised by anything James Harden said. And we know that in Brooklyn, this is a guy that he shows up, he wants to hoop with the team that he has had, you know? And he did not have that team that was idealized in Brooklyn. And now he's found a team where the players will be available. He can show up, do his thing, have a great running mate. I'm I'm not surprised that, you know, you're starting to see Harden sit a little bit up, you know, with better posture in his seat these days. <laughs> yeah, he's going to start losing a little weight. All of a sudden, the knee will get better. Sinead, what do you think about him saying he wanted to play for Philly all along? Because it seems to me, I just like look at what's there and what's missing. He's there, Daryl Morey's there. Then Daryl Morey's gone. Then all of a sudden, he stops playing without officially stopping playing, right? And then he gets dealt but to Brooklyn. And he's saying he wanted to get to Philly. He ran the same playbook this year. He just kind of unofficially stopped playing and got dealt to Daryl Morey in Philly. What do you think about Harden saying he wanted Philly all along? It makes perfect sense, you know, and I'll go back to Joel Embiid because if you're a guard, the number one game, you know, as a basketball player that you have to master is the pick and roll. And he's had some really good posts, right? There was a point, and you know this because I'm from Houston, I watched every iteration of the Houston Rockets. A point with Dwight Howard, a point with Clint Capella, a point with small ball, a point with Chris Paul, a point with Russell Westbrook. He's never had that quintessential foil to his game, meaning he wants to hit a step back three. Well, guess what? If you go with Joel, he can do exactly that. All right, you double team me because I'm knocking down the three-point shot. You've got the right now, which a lot of people are saying league MVP. Number one, first and foremost, Max, James Harden wants to win a championship. He's been MVP. He's been in the playoffs, and he's realized he needs help. The best version of help outside of guards and that aggregation of talent in Brooklyn that sort of went Ari is in Philly right now with Joel Embiid. And you got to hit money shots, James. Like, that's on James, right? Meantime, Jay Will said it on KJM in the morning on ESPN Radio. Sinead, greatest that could replace Malone and Stockton is the greatest pick-and-roll combination of all time considering what both these guys can do if, as Jay Will says, they can get a flow going and not wind up because this guy is an ISO, that guy is an ISO. Meanwhile... Just behind me in Brooklyn, Ben Simmons met with reporters for the first time as a member of the Brooklyn Nets. And the man we hadn't seen or heard from all season finally had something to say. There's just a lot of things internally that, you know, had happened um, over time. And it just got to a place where I don't think it was good for me um, mentally. So, you know, it is what it is. It happened and, and uh, moving forward. So it was just piled up a bunch of things that have gone over the years to where I just knew I wasn't myself and I needed to get back in, into that place of, you know, being myself and, and being happy as a person um, and taking care of my well-being. Um, and that was like, the, that was the major thing for me. Um, it wasn't about the basketball. It wasn't about the money, anything like that. Um, you know, I want to be who I am and, and get back to, you know, playing basketball at that level and you know being myself so i'm excited to you know get in the floor with these guys is incredible team incredible talent so i think it's going to be scary um having those guys running alongside me um there's you know multiple different weapons on the floor and i think at the pace we want to play at it's, it's going to be unreal philly too tough i know what i'll do i'll go to brooklyn but actually in new york the nets don't mean what the sixers mean in Philadelphia, right? Even if the Nets are a national story. What's your reaction to what he just said, Shanae? Well, first and foremost, Max, I feel like a lot of fans are like, okay, now he's back. He got where he wanted to go and he's available for Brooklyn. But I'd remind them that athletes, they constantly compartmentalize until they can't. 
meaning his exit from Philly, that was the last straw. That was the end of the road. And we all knew that it was likely he probably was not going to play. If you're an athlete, just reading how Ben Simmons has conducted himself, you knew he was compartmentalizing. That's what it, that's what it takes to be a top-tier athlete, figuring out how to you know handle your family, your friends, your emotions, playing, the expectations, all of those things and above. And then now he's in Brooklyn, and I'm not surprised that he's back. Some people just need a change of scenery after experiencing so much. And I'm glad to see, just like James, him happy, and it's better for the NBA. And I know the next question is likely going to be, all right, what will the game look like? I think this is a perfect fit for Ben Simmons. Now, a lot of people will say, well, if you couldn't handle the pressures of Frulli, how are you going to handle the pressures of what's existing currently with Brooklyn? Kyrie unavailable at home. KD coming back from injury very soon. Well, he just needed a change of scenery so he can get back to feeling comfortable with his game. That man is going to catch rebounds and find KD, catch rebounds and find Kyrie. And there's a big difference, Max, in the offense of doing a dribble handoff in Philly where you're rolling after doing a dribble handoff and Joel Embiid's in the paint, Tobias Harris is in the paint, versus doing a dribble handoff, you know, with KD and Kyrie where you can be the center. This is a different game, and it lends well to Ben Simmons. Well, Sinead, like in, in Philly, they're like, I oh, put him in the dunker spot, right? What, what do you, but when you talk about the way they use him, I look at Giannis and see some similarities in their games where Giannis, the way they built around him, shooters everywhere, he's coming downhill. You either double him, he finds the open man, or he dunks it on your head, right? So he can do that. Or is he playing off ball in the dunker spot with Kyrie handling? They have shooters. If the ball's in Simmons' hands, especially if Harris ever gets healthy, they have shooters at a, at a ridiculously high level everywhere you look. So how do you use them? It's both, Max. You just listed it. In transition, Ben Simmons' best offense is the first, you know, 10 seconds, right? So he gets the rebound, he pushes, and then he's going to initiate the offense, and then he's going to be a screener and roll. And essentially, he goes from being point guard to center in the matter of 10 seconds. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.